In this lesson, we are going to implement shopping cart. By the end of this lesson, when you add a product to the cart, you will be redirected to a screen like this, and you will have a list of products in your shopping cart. You should be able to change the quantity of a product or remove the product from list. Let's implement this feature. Here is the plan to create cart screen. First of all, we need to go to the Pages folder and right-click here, New File, and set file name to cart.js. Next step is going to be copying content of index.js, the home page, inside cart.js, and scroll up, rename function to cart, and get rid of content inside layout. Next step, get style and set it to classes right here. And we are going to get the cart information from React Context. To get the error message, let's say here we didn't import use context, but there is no error here. What we can do is to just install npm install eslint and use save dev to install it as a development dependency and don't ship that to the production environment. The next step is gonna be running eslint enter dot slash node module slash dot bin eslint dash dash init select the default it's to check syntax and find problems. JavaScript module, React, No for TypeScript, Browser, JavaScript, and press Yes to install ESLint plugin React, which is a dependency for this configuration. After initializing ESLint, you should get all basic error messages so you can fix them, you know, like this. Let's fix the errors here. I need to import, use a style, use context. Using control space, you will get the recommendation. That's it. And it says React must be part of this. Let's import React from React. Great. Next step. For some errors, we are going to ignore the errors. Let's say for this one, we are going to ignore React slash prop types. What we can do is to go to .eslintrc.js and inside the rules set react slash props types to zero. Aha, uh -huh, there is no error here. Next step. First of all, we need to check cart.loading. If we are loading cart, we should show circular progress like this. Otherwise, if we have loaded the cart, we need to have another check. And here is the next check. We check the items in the cart. If the number of item in the cart is zero, we need to render an alert message. And the message is cart is empty and a link for going to homepage for shopping. And the last case is gonna be showing cart items i just i just create a react fragment like this and inside react fragment we are going to show cart items let's import circular progress here for showing shopping cart screen first of all i'm gonna show heading one and set the heading to shopping cart after that create a slide like this inside a slide create a grid because we are going to show two columns and for the first column set md to 9 with the wide screen in a bigger section which is gonna be shopping cart items and the small section which is action part to proceed to checkout. Here we are going to create a table. So use table 
container from material UI and create table itself. Inside the table, we need to create table header. And here is the table header. It includes name, quantity, price, and action. Quantity and price set align to right. We're gonna make them right align in the screen. Use control space to import, to import elements from material UI like this. And for table body, create a table body right after table header. And inside that use cart.data.line items to map each item in the shopping cart to a row in this table like this. So for creating a row, I use table row set key to cart items that name. It's going to be the product name. And the first cell is going to show product name. For next cell, we are going to create a select box to make it possible for user to change the item of this product in the shopping cart. Let's import select. And we need to define a handler for quantity change in the cart. Also import menu item here. We'll define it later. Let's go for the next cell. The next cell is the price. It's super simple. Just create a table cell and set it to price that formatted with symbol. And the last cell is gonna be a button. Create a cell inside that define a button, import a button from material UI, and is, uh, this button is going to delete or remove an item from shopping cart. We need to implement remove from cart here. Before going for implementing quantity change handler and remove from cart handler, let's create a second column. It's the action column. So right after this grid, create another grid it's you know an item grid and inside that define a card to create a border around it and create a list inside the card let's import list from material ui inside this list the first item is a list item and in this list item that you are going to import it from material UI, we show subtotal. And subtotal comes from cart information, cart.subtotal.formatted with symbol. The second list item is a button to proceed to checkout. So we need to implement proceed to checkout handler here. But we only show this if total items is greater than zero. Because I'm going to render this screen only in front end, not in the server side. At the very end, I'm gonna get rid of get static props. And instead of it, I'm going to use this. Use dynamic. Dynamic is a function from Next.js. And by having this setting SSR equal to false, this page will be rendered only on the client side, on the front end, not on the back end. To fix the issue with export default, I scroll up and get rid of export default for the function. Also, I scroll down at the very end and press control space. And we need to import dynamic from next slash dynamic here. Okay, let's implement event handler. The first event that we're going to implement is remove from cart handler. It get list item and inside that we get an instance of commerce from commerce.js and we call this API commerce.cart.remove this line item and then we update the context with the updated cart from commerce.js. Press control space to import it. That's all about remove from cart. Let's go for the next event that we are going to handle and it's quantity change handler. Here we get the line item and the quantity that need to be changed. First of all, get an instance of getEcommerce of commerce.js 
and then we call update method on cart object. In this method, we introduce the ID of line item and the new quantity. And after that, we update the cart in the React context. The last event is proceed to checkout handler. And here we simply redirect user to checkout screen. Press control space to import router from next slash router here. There is no need to have products here. Let's get rid of it. And also the cart and box. Good. We implemented the cart screen. Let's import table body. And there is no error in the code. Let's check the result. Here I select a product, add it to cart. Aha, uh -huh. here in the cart screen, I have shopping cart, list of products, and subtotal. Let's change the quantity to three. Aha, uh -huh. it just changed. For action, in the remove, let's make it right aligned. In the code, find this one, make it right aligned. Yeah, it's much better. Let's click on remove. You get this message, cart is empty, go shopping. Let's test it again. Select this product, set quantity to three, add it to cart. Select another product, set quantity to two and add it to cart. We have five items in the cart and here is the cart screen. If I click on proceed to checkout, I will get an error. Checkout screen is the topic of next lesson. What we did in this lesson is to create a shopping cart like this. And for next lesson, we implement checkout. Until that lesson, bye-bye.